In today's video, I want to talk to you about lithium ion batteries. Lithium ion, the name lithium ion, it's kind of a confusing term because we use that as a blanket statement for all different types of lithium ion batteries in the fishing industry. And we use it for one specific type of battery. And that battery is the 11.1 nominal NMC battery. These cells, NMC, stand for nickel, manganese, cobalt, oxide. These are the same cells used in drill batteries. These are also the same cells used in the 14.8 nominal battery we call NMC. So you can see why it can get pretty confusing when we talk about lithium ion batteries. The problem with this, these batteries right here is the voltage range. When these batteries are fully charged, they're 12.6 volts and they'll discharge all the way down to just below nine volts or so. The problem with that is the voltage range of our modern day electronics are higher. They bottom out at about 10.8 to 11 volts, depending on the manufacturer. So let's hop on the computer here and look at the Hummingbird Helix 7. We'll see right here, operating voltage 10.8 to 20 volts. The hook reveal, uh, 10.8, to 17 volts and that Markham LX7. This is actually the instruction book for the Markham 7 or for the LX7. And it states the Markham digital sonar needs at least 11 volts and preferably over 12 volts to properly operate. Your fish finder stay on when you're below those. I'm sure your screen might stay on, but you're really gonna, uh, your, your returns, your digital, your sonar returns, you're not gonna have that target separation you did if you're within the recommended range. I mean, this is the manufacturer recommended range for these three fish finders. Shit. So I ran a series of tests on five different types of lithium ion batteries. And this orange line right here, this is the Markham 10 amp hour uh, lithium iron phosphate. I just threw that in there for a reference. Look how much higher that is. That is because the voltage on that battery is a lot higher and stays a lot higher. That's one of the characteristics of a lithium iron phosphate battery. Where these batteries are all um, lithium ion batteries. Now let's just go through them one by one. We'll start with lightning lithium. Now one of the things that I noticed right away is this battery says 12.6 volts. That is the charged voltage of this battery. Not to be confused with the nominal voltage of lithium iron phosphate, that's 12.8. Why they put that 12.6 on there, who knows? You decide, you tell me. Let me know in the comments why you think that says 12.6. The nominal voltage of this battery is 11.1. So let's look at this battery. Here is the discharge curve. And based on what we know about the operating voltages of the Helix and the Lowrance, and I just picked those two because they're probably the two most popular, popular mid-range fishing fish finders right there. We're just below 10.8 volts and we have 11.3 amp hours. What's that mean? This is a 16 amp hour battery, marketed as a 16 amp hour battery, but we're leaving about five amp hours on the table that are below the voltage range for those fish finders. Why would they do that? Why would they sell you a battery when you can only use two thirds of it? It's, it's ridiculous, in my opinion. So every one of these batteries is like that. Every one of these batteries, Let's look up the Norsk. All right, here we go with the Norsk. 10.79 volts, amp hours, 10, but basically 10 and a half. So you have a 15 amp hour battery. You can only use 10 and a half of those amp hours above the 10.8 mark for the operating voltage of your Helix or your Lowrance. Let's look at the Naqua 10 amp hour. And honestly, this has just been a huge disappointment. I know this one is really, really popular with the kayak guys. And I love the small size, but 
it doesn't even pull the rate of capacity. So you can see right here, we got about nine amp hours out of this battery. Let's look at the voltage, 10.799. We got just under five amp hours. So, and this thing's what? I don't know how much this thing is, 100, 100 and some change. And you, and you only get five amp hours out of it with a hummingbird. Now, I also have the Markham Force and the Markham Might. Markham Force is a Shields exclusive deal. You can't buy this on the Markham website. You can only go buy it at Shields. This is a 12 amp hour lithium ion battery. Now, since this is made by Markham, and Markham says their fish finders need 11 volts, at least 11 volts to operate, preferably 12. We'll, we'll go with 11. 12 amp hour battery at 10.99 volts, I got 7.16 amp hours. This is a Markham battery, and the Markham instruction book says you need at least 11 volts. The same manufacturer, the same people, and they're selling batteries that you can't, I mean, why isn't this listed as a seven amp hour? You got listed as a 12 amp hour and you can't use all its capacity in your own fish finder. It's ridiculous. The reason companies do this is because the cells in these batteries are about 30% cheaper than lithium iron phosphate batteries. It comes down to money. That's why I make these videos, so you guys know what's going on. Markham Might, seven and a half amp hour battery. Okay, Markham Might, we're looking for 11 volts. There's 11, we'll get just under it. 3.3 amp hours above 11 volts. This is a seven and a half amp hour battery. This battery is what, 80 bucks? You're paying 80 bucks for 3.3 amp hour, usable amp hour battery in your Markham device, in your LX7. If that's not a ripoff, I don't know what is, guys. By comparison, let's look at the Markham 10 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. So let's go find that 11 volt mark here. So I'm right here, I'm just above 11. This is a 10 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. This is the difference between lithium iron phosphate, lithium ion. 11 volt mark here, you're able to pull 11 amp hours. It passes test. You're able to extract, you're able to use all those amp hours in that voltage range for that fish finder. That is the difference, guys. These lithium ion batteries, why anyone would buy them, why anyone would even sell them is, is beyond me. The good thing about the Shields, good thing about Shields, and especially this battery, Shields has a very good return program. Uh, if you're not happy with your purchase, return it. I would take advantage of that, especially if I went out and bought this battery from them. If you own one of these batteries, let me know in the comments below. Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button. Watch this next video. If you got something out of this video, I want you to share it. Share it with anyone that you think will get value out of uh, the work I'm doing here. Thanks for watching, guys. Watch this next video.